Hi guys and welcome to our brand new video and it's all about networking fundamentals and networking scanning. Before you can actually scan a network, you have to know how it works, uh, how the device communicate with each other, how the communication is happening and we have to go through all that steps and things in order to actually scan the network and furthermore exploit it. I really want to make things clear and basically this is a really important topic because because no matter from here on out no matter what we are doing we're gonna get involved with networks they are just everywhere no matter if you are exploiting scanning gaining information it's they're everywhere so you cannot actually get a reverse shell uh, without networking knowledge you cannot for example ddos even ddos without networking knowledge you must know about networks and this video is for that purpose in order to explain to you how they work what's the communication how the device see each other what's port firewall and all that stuff so uh, let's start let's cover first what's a network the network is a connection actually between different hosts or device or people there's a network everywhere so in our IT environment, we call a network connection between hosts. But there are a connection between people, social links, communication between chips in the devices. There are networking everywhere. Or we, we actually live in a network as a human. So in our IT environment, whenever we speak of network, we mean connection between different hosts. So the network is actually how and where they communicate and what they are actually using, the whole process, just the connection, the whole connection is a network. So uh, I mentioned host in the previous slide, so now we have to take clear what's actually a host. The host in our IT environment is called a device, which is connected to the network. So it has assigned IP address and it has a, the MAC address, which is the physical one so uh just re remember that the host is a device connected to the network and having in internet access that's a host so it's uh it's visible to the outside of the network so the host has a unique ip address for the network and a unique mac address which is brought to it by its manufacturer the, the mac address is standing on the physical address of the device itself so every device has different MAC address and it's just a set of numbers and letters which actually shows the physical address of that device. The host can either act as a client or as a server and I just get a brief overview of what's that. The server is a device which is waiting for a connection on a specific port. The client is a device which actually requests something from the server and wants the response back. And we're gonna demonstrate that in future videos. So, uh, what's the IP address? Actually, the IP address is a unique set of numbers which represents the address of your device. By address, I mean how other devices see it and how other devices communicate with it. For example, if you want to see your neighbor, you go to his address, knock to his door, and see it. It's the same thing with computers. By by knowing the IP address of a machine, you can actually interact and connect with it. This is why IP address is used for a connection. By using the IP address, the machines know where and how to communicate. The IP address can be local or private or external or public. So uh, let's take that a little bit closer look. What's external IP address? The external IP address is a unique, absolutely unique, and uh, it's assigned by your ISP and it shows where you are and for example most of the cases the external ip address are standing on the gateway itself the gateway is just uh, getting that external ip address and using a different services like dhcp it's creating a whole local or private network with different machines so uh, the ip address the external ip address is a unique so that means more machines can share one external ip address for example, if you are at the same network with three hosts and you are connected to the one router, you can, for example, 
uh, look for your external IP address using Google or other tools and you're gonna see that all of the machines are actually using the exact same external IP address this is because uh, they have local IP address assigned and the gateway the router is actually knowing what packets to redirect to who and that's why you have one external IP address so uh, as I said your gateway is actually assigning all the hosts different IP address for the local network and they are called local IP addresses or private they are unique for the network so that means you cannot have two uh, exact same IPs on the same network but you can have two exact same IPs on the different network so if I am here on my network and my friend is on his home network we can have both same local IP address and they are not gonna make any kind of conflict at all that's because the local IP address are only visible to the network itself to the local network itself so that means for the outside they are not visible at all you cannot access a host by typing 192.168 because that's the local one so you cannot access that they are just local for the specific network and they are unique for that network so uh, I hope I call the IP address uh, good enough so it's time to actually call the gateway what is a gateway the gateway is just a network device it just uh, it redirects all the packets, it turns all the services and has firewall inside. So it's just a device which actually creates your, your network. It's a device where your network, the edge, this is the device, the edge between the, the external and the internal or private network. The gateway is actually running a lot of services like DNS and DHCP, which allow a local network to be actually accessible, visible and to be actually a thing. So the uh, the gateway has firewall inside, which is uh, which can be firewall or hardware. And we're gonna talk about firewall in a while. Uh, but for now, you have to remember that it's just uh, the gateway between our local network and our external network. All the packets are full into the gateway. So, for example, if you are want uh, if you want to visit the website and you navigate that website, the packets themselves are firstly Firstly, transfer to the gateway and therefore the website you want to visit. So, uh, by using the gateway's DNS, you can actually visit uh, websites because if we don't have DNS and we, for example, type google.com, we won't get any page loading. So, this is how the gateway's job is just standing there, passing all packets through it. It's running a lot of services and has a firewall inside which can actually block or configurable, and we're gonna see that in a second. So, uh, what is the firewall? We have to make clear that the firewall is probably the most important thing in cybersecurity, or especially in the networks, because the firewall is the thing that can secure or uh, can prevent an attack, can actually block connection, it can do a lot of stuff, and its working mechanism is really, is really simple. Uh, firewall is hardware device or a piece of software which actually only purpose is to filtrate all the traffic which is flying by. So it's just standing in at the points where there are a lot of packets, a lot of traffic there. And its only purpose is to actually filter that traffic. And how does it filter the traffic? It's using it's done by using a rules which are predefined by us. So the rules can be, for example, block that connection from that IP. Or whenever the connection comes on that port, block it or whenever the connection comes from that port, allow it. So the, the firewall is just working really simple, it just has a, a set of rules, and it scans all the traffic it's passed through with that specific rules. Whenever it matches, it does the current actions. For example, if it's uh, configured to actually pass everything it matches, it just pass it. It can be configured to deny and just uh, deny the connections. The firewall is actually building the networks and they are making it secure because, you know, for example, if you build many firewalls and you actually configure the right services before that firewalls, so they are not visible, you can create stable infrastructure and stable uh, servers, stable services. So this is the nightmare for the hackers to bypass the firewalls, to actually see what's behind them, to actually connect them. And keep in mind that as a ethical hacker, this is your worst enemy. 
because there are uh, firewalls called IDS and IPS which can actually trigger or prevent an intrusion if it's count as that. So for example, if you are sending a malicious file or trying a Metasploit module and you get triggered by an IDS or IPS, you're going to be instantly seen, discarded and blocked. So it's cutting your way in. And for example, you are in a network inside and you start scanning and exploiting some machines and if you get triggered by the, by the firewall or IDS IPS, it's game over for you. So uh, you really have to, uh, to to take a note and warn with the firewall because they are really important. They are building the security of the network and they are just our worst nightmares. It's hard to bypass them. It's hard to actually get over them. Uh, they are just, just hard enough. They are amazing things, which is good, but but often they are not configured correctly so we can take advantage of that we just have to uh, to remember that they are a uh, hardware device or piece of software actually every machine no matter of the host it it has a firewall inside built in just software firewall inside for example your windows pc has it your linux pc has it your android and iphones has their firewall built in so it's uh, not that stable and strong, but it has it and it can build connection uh, and it can block connection on local levels. So uh, just remember that uh, those things that it's a device or software always die doing is filtrating the traffic, working with the rules. Working means that it can block or allow connections for a specific rules or specific ports and it's actually securing the network. Uh, okay, so there is a quick quick example. As you can see, there is an internet here, the internet space. We have a gateway or a router here, and we said that every gateway has a firewall inside. There are four machines connected to that gateway. As you can see, two of them are using wireless, and two of them are, are using wired Ethernet cable. The the method they are using to communicate does not really mean something. They, uh, the four machines see each other, they can communicate with each other. There is no matter what interface they are using. So, uh, they are connected to the internet, to, from the, from that router. And for example, every rule we set up here, for example, uh, block that connection or block that IP for that IP or block no connection on that IP or allow no connection on that IP is gonna be applied to all the network inside. Because as you can see, no matter the interface, the machines are communicating through the gateway through the gateway they are not connecting directly to the internet they are connecting through the gateway to the internet so everything set up here will be applied to all the network here so that's how they are securing the network it's really practical and good uh, so we've talked about ports and I have to explain what's the port because it's basically really important so what is the port? The port is basically a number which represents endpoint communication. And what does that mean? When you're requesting something from a server, as we said before, one machine is client, the other is server. When you request something, you request it on a specific port. For example, when you navigate uh, google.com, you are requesting from the server of Google connection on port 80. Because web server is standing or HTTP service is standing on port 80. So you request request that and the server brings it to you. If it's allowed and it passes all the firewall rules. So uh, the port is actually representing a number which show which tells us how devices and machines communicate with each other. How they see each other, uh, how they work, and what they request and receive and retrieve as a packet. Uh, so the port is really important because you have to understand few, few fundamental concepts here. For example, the machines themselves do not know what is HTTP or SSH. They just know how to send packets. For example, if you want to actually uh, navigate to a web browser, a web server, a web page, and you just type the web page there, the browser and the machine, by using the web browser, knows that you want to access a web page. So by default, web browsers are using with port 80 since most of the web servers are configured to be working on port 80. For example, if I want to access SSH service on some machine, 
uh, my machine is sending packets on port 22 for that machine nothing more you have to understand that the ports are the way machines communicate each other they they do not know services they do not know nothing they ju they just know what is ip address what is a port number and actually a packet so we have diff uh, so we have packets we have ips and we have ports when i access some server my machine is sending packets on that port i want to access and that machine if the port is open is retrieving me the connection and, it, and we are making a station if it, if it's closed it's gonna prompt to me with a message for example web page not visible so that's how the machines are working actually stupid and easy but but it's working so uh the the things like http upmp dns they are made for our our human understand and uh, understanding so we don't have to actually we are not machines we are talking with letters words and uh we actually using things like http https for our own understanding the machine does not know what's HTTP actually. It, it, it do not know what is a DNS. It just know that it's port 80. So uh, that's why it's basically support. It's how the machine communicate with each other. I must take note that every service running has a port opened. So you can have only one port per service. Or actually you can have one port unique. For example, if you want two HTTP servers, you cannot build them on port 80. The one of them must be on 8080 or other port. It just does not matter. You need to understand that the machines, the ports are just used for machines to actually understand what connection to request and on what connection actually to listen. Because for example, if there are uh, two or three open ports on the same service and the connection comes, our server wouldn't know on what packet to actually, on what port to actually reply. So in order to, to avoid conflicts, one service can be built and run only on one port on specific host. Uh, so this is basically what support. So uh, now it's time to move on since we've explained what support. And now here is the key thing that you need to actually understand and see. Uh, so what do we have here? We have a server, firewall, internet space, a router, and machines. So what's actually happening? And let's say that's our local network, that one. We have assigned external IP on the gateway by our ISP. It's just assigned by that. Therefore, whenever the hosts connect to our network, it's assigned a local IP address with the with the numbers 192.168 or 10, 10, 10, 10. So it's assigned to our machine so whenever the machines walks in or connects to our network it get an ip address from our gateway this ip address is completely local and it's not visible to the outside of our gateway or router it's visible only here so that the machines between them between our network can communicate with each other so for example if i ping that phone it's gonna receive the ping and if with the phone I ping the machine, it's still gonna receive the, the ping and it's gonna respond to me. So uh, let's break uh, into into few things. Every one of these devices has their, their firewall inside. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And there is also a firewall here which actually protects the network. Those firewalls are just local and they do not protect the network, they just protect the operation system itself. So, uh, why do we have actually external and uh, local IP addresses? As you can see, external IP address is standing here. So, for example, in this topology, if, if I check my external IP address here and here, it's going to be the same. Because it's standing on the gateway. It's here. Our external IP address is here. So, uh, the gateway has service called DHCP and NAT which actually allow the machines inside the network to actually receive a, a network connection and, and an IP address. So it takes that IP address and actually 
passes local IP addresses made by the DHCP to all the machines. Those local IP addresses are used for seeing machines between themselves and actually know where to redirect packets afterwards. So, what does it happen? Let's say we are on that machine and we want to access like InforceCyber.com. It's somewhere here. We navigate our browser and navigate InforceCyber.com and what does it happen? After we click enter, our machine is sending packet to the router. Here. Not here. It's sending to the router. The, the router then starts to scan all its DNS services because the router and the machines do not know what's actually in for cyber, they know the IP of in for cyber. As I said before, domain names are used for our own easy use. We don't need to remember IP addresses, we need to remember letters which make sense to us, so it's easier. The router starts to scan DNS server, servers to see if it has the, info, the IP of Infor Cyber, and if it finds it, it just uh, redirects that packet to the IP of Infor Cyber, which is here. The server of Infor Cyber, if it's waiting on connection on port 80, it just grabs that packet, see the see what it wants. For example, I want to get your main page, and respond and responds to the router with the response from that packet. The packet from the Infor Cyber goes to the router, and then the router know who sent that packet by using the ARP, MAC and IP address and the router redirects the response from the Enforce Cyber to our machine. And what do we get? We get the loading page, the main page of the website. That's what is happening. Let's say if Enforce Cyber is that server, as you can see it's standing before a firewall as well. So if we send like packets with uh, with a known port or port that is not used by the server, it's gonna be blocked by the firewall, no matter the, this one or this one. So this is why how the network is is working and how the device communicate with each other. I think it's simple enough. You just need to actually visualize it to break it in your mind into concepts and to actually see what's happening for yourself. For example, if you ping is the same thing again. The ping packet goes to the gateway, the gateway re redirects the ping packet to a specific IP address and then if the ping is allowed, it's gonna respond and, and bring us a, a result like 64 bytes was sent. So this is the basics of networking and how they work, how they transmit packets, how they actually get assigned IP addresses. And uh, now it's time to move on. So we've covered basics. Now it's time to move on into network scanning. Uh, so what's actually network scanning? It's uh, basically discovering all available hosts. Because, for example, when you pop into a network, you actually do not know what's happening there. Let's say you get a reverse show from a server or from a client, and you are at a network where you do know nothing about. Keep in mind that there can be firewalls, IDS, IPS, uh, there can be other servers which are internal visible only, I mean local, and there, there can be a lot of stuff actually, but you do not know nothing because you just get the reverse shell, you are at that machine shell, but you don't know what's happening on the network. So uh, it's like clearing the fog between before our, our eyes because while sky in the network, we gain an idea of how it's structured, what does it has, what host they have, what services are running on their host, and many more stuff. Keep in mind that you have to be really careful because uh, there is a chance that you get triggered by IDS IPS, which means game over for you. For example, if they set up a rule that uh, forbids outbound connection on a specific port and you connect to that specific port, you may be triggered from the IDS or IPS, which is uh, really back, which is really bad and really problematic for us. So uh, with scanning the network, we can actually map and visualize the network so we can actually gain a better understanding of the targets. And we can, of course, understand the network itself, how it's working, where are the IDS, IPS, uh, what they are reason for, and, and actually how we can bypass them.
using internal servers, internal machines, or uh, internal services. So, uh, actually, why we need to scan the network? Let's say you've hacked into a device, why do you need to scan the network? Because our biggest goal is to actually bigger, bigger and bigger control. We as ethical hackers want to control completely everything. We want to take control of the whole network. We want to actually uh, make it ours and to be able to do everything we want with the network. So we need to first we scan because we need to understand the network. We, we have to understand the target. We must know what devices are where and how they are structured, what they are running, all the stuff about that. The good scanning means that we can actually start thinking for attack vectors. So we can start thinking about how to attack the specific networks, how, on what port and how to actually use our tools, so what to go for. Just we can go for attack vectors since we scan the network. We cannot build a tag vector if we actually do not know nothing about that network. It's impossible to actually build a tag vector. Therefore, we can seek for vulnerabilities and therefore higher privileges, which means bigger control. So the core, as we speak before in the net information gathering, the sky of the network is like information gathering and it's crucial since all the further exploits will depend on gathered information all the exploits no matter what we do from here on out all the action based from us will be based on the gathered information so the scanning here here is really crucial and it's really important so uh the main tools i use for scanning are actually nmap and zenmap for graphical net discard armitage better cap wireshark and tcp dump so uh the cool thing about Nmap and Zenmap is that it's quite a complex tool. It's hard, to, it's hard to use, it's hard to learn, but it can do uh, really amazing stuff. It can uh, firstly check for all the open ports on all the machines. It can scan the whole subnets, the whole networks. It can also uh, make ping scan. It has scripts for evading firewalls. It has scripts for evading IDS, IPS. It has uh, amazing opportunity of crafting packets. It can send different kind of packets like uh, scene acknowledgement and all the possible packets. It can output the, the report so we can uh, check it later on and if we forgot something. And, and, it, and it's just amazing tool which can uh, actually do a lot of stuff and it's really useful. Uh, the cool thing about ZenMap is that uh, besides that NMAP can do, it can also make a map or a graph about the network. So when you scan the network, there is a generated map about that. So you can actually see in practice what's there. Where's the gateway, how much machines, what it's running on that machines, how they are structured. So it generates a map which is kind of easy to use, easy to read, and it's amazing, really helpful. The second tool is NetDiscar and uh, I like this tool when it comes to no time. Uh, I mean that this tool does not give us a lot of information. It just uh, gets an idea about the IP address, the MAC address and eventually the manufacturer. But the point of NetDiscar is that actually it's fast and easy to run. It can uh, run on a specific IP range on a specific interface and that's it. It just gets the IP and the MAC address of all the hosts. The next tool is Armitage, which, which is basically the, the Metasploit graphical. But besides hacking, it has modules for uh, information gathering and network scanning. So you can actually scan the network, see what's running up there using Armitage, and therefore build attack vectors based on that. The next tool is BetterCap, and it's mainly a main the middle framework. But uh, it has the ability of, of actually uh, gathering information about the network. It can scan for hosts. And the uh, coolest thing about BearCap is that you can actually see what packets are flying at the moment. For example, you can see what the other hosts are using. If the packets are not uh, under HTTPS, which is secured, you can get the exact same copy of the packets, which can be a password, of course. But if they are secured, 
you can get the packets without uh, that sensitive information but still you can get information about what the targets are using for example if they are using uh, facebook uh, google twitter you uh, the whole thing is going to be displayed to you so therefore you can build attack vectors like spoofing dns main the middle attacks fake access point attacks if there is a wi-fi uh, wireless network connected uh, you can think of different attack vectors based on that information uh, so the both two tools left are just for uh, packet analyzing and I personally like TCP dump more it's just uh, a, a tool which analyzes all the packets which are flying by that means the source IP, the destination IP, the ports, the session and what is the actual packet so it's very useful if you want to check if there's a connection if, if it's missing and actually making a session on some port and it just good things about analyzing packets so these were the tools and uh, this is for me now thank you all guys for watching uh, so this was for me now this this video was about uh, networking fundamentals and network scanning thank you for watching uh, I hope you understand everything here because the concepts are really crucial and important uh, keep in mind that if you do not understand please go back and watch it again this theory is really needed because no matter what we are doing from here on out, we can encounter networking in all cases. In all cases. So it's very important to actually understand that and to see what's actually happening. Uh, in the future videos, we're going to see that in practice. We're going to demonstrate about uh, what's actually happening with the network, with the packets. We're going to see that in practice. But before you see something in practice, you must know theoretically how it's working. Uh, so this lecture is really important don't uh, misunderstand it and uh, yeah so stay tuned guys thank you for watching and see you in the next videos